Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change out the ball assembly for a Honeywell zone valve. Now, this zone valve, I have an exact replacement, so this should be an easy switch over. I've already changed out the motor head and end switch. That didn't fix the problem. Look in the description. I'm going to link the other videos that I've done on this system to make it easier for you guys in case you don't have to do this, but you do have to change out a motor head and end switch on a Honeywell zone valve. Now guys, keep one thing in mind. It's extremely important to make sure that the system is cooled down. So shut power off to the boiler and then give it a half an hour, maybe an hour, depending on the size of the system before you get started. If you touch the pipes and you can't hold the pipes, then it's still too hot. So just keep that in mind before you get started. So what we'll do now is material and tools. All right, this is the material list for this job. So I've already replaced the motor head and the end switch on top of the zone valve. So for the remainder of the zone valve, which is this here, what I really need is I need this part here. I believe this ball uh, on the zone valve in the system needs to be replaced. I have masking tape and then I took a shopping bag and I cut it into squares and that will be to protect the electronics below the zone valve that I'm going to work on. Guys, this is the material that I believe I need on this job, so what we'll do now is a tools list. Alright guys, this is the tools list. So I have my socket set. I only need 5 sixteenths, but in case you're using uh, something else different size, just bring the entire set with you. I have a light, my finishing kit, so channel lock pliers, box and wrenches, anything else I might need wire strippers, gloves, bucket, a steel pen, an oil pen, which is clean, it's not meant for oil, it's for all my other automotive fluids or hot water heating systems. And then I have a washer hose over there. If you have a big system, run a hose outside, but because this system is small and I do have a laundry sink really close, uh, I'm not going to carry a big hose with me. Guys, this is what I need for tools on this job, so let's get started. Alright, so the ball on the inside here, I, I need to extract that out of this uh, zone valve to replace it with the one that's in the system. So there are four... Uh, nuts here. These are 5 16 so just loosen them off. And this here is the little ball that uh, turns flow on and off. So we have our arrow here. You see how small the port is and all the ball does is it'll plug when you open it it'll move away and allow water to flow through so this is what i'm going to replace and that should fix this issue with this zone holding open we'll see what the the ball inside the current zone valve looks like all right so this portion here this bigger portion will go into here and then this smaller one will go into here so this thing will really only go on one way, but if you need to, just take a picture. All right, with the system now cooled, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a little bit of pressure in the boiler system and go check all the air vents before moving along. So guys, first thing is power's off. Always make sure your power's off. So this is our ball valve for our water. We'll shut that off. There's no water that's going to now enter the system. So we have a valve here that we are going to shut later on, but right now all I'm going to do is open the valve. And we'll drain a little bit of water out of the system. You can see how much bubbles there are. All right, that's probably fine, so we'll, we'll close our valve, and now we'll, we'll go check the bleeders. Okay, so there's a space for a flathead screwdriver. These are all chewed up pretty badly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some channel locks, and it's neural just on the outside, and all we're going to do is give it a turn. 
and just make sure that they open and close. Okay, go through all the radiators. Once that's all done, we can address our, our zone valve. All right, first thing I'm going to take the cover off. Now there's a screw here and there's a screw on the opposite side. Alright, so I'm going to just tape a bag over the lower zone valve. This is just a precaution. Okay, so I've uh, taped up the circ pump and then these two zone valves. So any water that comes out of here, uh, it won't splash onto the um, electronics of the zone valve below. So this here, I'm going to close this. Okay, I'm going to take an energy kit to guess that these are gate valves. It's just a big door that opens and closes just based on the design. Now the one thing I do worry is it leaking out of the stem later on, but we'll address that issue when we get to it. So now what I can do is loosen off the screws and then we can take the top off. All right, so I'm gonna put a pan underneath and loosen them all up a little bit. Don't take anything out yet. And now we can take the remaining of the bolts out. So you can see how it's all crusty. So the very top will have to be cleaned off. And we'll take a very quick look at the ball. So you can see the pits on, in the one on the right and then the, the left one is brand new. Alright, as you can see that the... Uh, the gate valve is not holding tight, or it's coming back in through the other side. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up. The surface a little bit. I'm using a fitting brush to clean the surface. Be gentle because you don't want to scratch anything, otherwise the o-ring may leak. All right, so this O-ring needs to be taken out, so just be careful and use a flathead screwdriver to pop it out. So we'll put the O-ring in. All right, the reason it's dripping is because I pinched the gasket in the back. All right, what I'm gonna do is open the drain on the return. And then we'll tighten the two bolts down. How tight to tighten them? As far as I know, there is no spec. But make sure you go back and forth, back and forth. And give it a few minutes to make sure that nothing is leaking before you go further ahead. 
All right, so with the first two screws in, we'll put in the other two. All right, so wipe this down. Give it a couple minutes and check to see if there's any leaks. To test the zone valve for leaks, open the blue handled gate valve. You don't have to open it all the way, open it a crack until you hear water flowing. Once the water stops flowing, wipe it down and then take a detailed look to make sure nothing's dripping. All right, so everything looks to be okay. So I'm gonna put the zone valve head back on. So guys, once again, you can always hit the, the lever to help line up the internal part and the motor head. Alright, I'm going to get ready to start purging the system. So I opened the uh, water. That is our feeder. So this valve here needs to be closed. So this is the return. This is our purging station. So if you don't close this, you're just going to keep sending water through the system and you're never going to get the air out. All right, that's closed. So we're going to open our water. Now you want to be very careful with this. If you open it too much, you can blow the relief. All right, so this valve is open. I've uh, set the zone valve to uh, manual open. This is closed and now we're going to turn on our purge station. And that is the air in the system that we're now going to purge out. So this will be a patience thing. Don't rush this, but what you're waiting for is all those little bubbles coming up to be gone. Once that's done, we'll go to the radiators and purge them at each radiator. So we see how much air is in the system. This hasn't subsided yet, but once again, when you see zero bubbles, that is when you're going to go up and bleed out your radiators. Okay, so this is our bleeder. Or one of them anyway. Okay, so this is done, tighten it back up, wipe up the water, and now go through all the other radiators and make sure that you open the bleeder valve to get the air out. Alright, so I went around, I bled out all the radiators, and now you can see that we have no more bubbles. So that covers purging this zone. All right, so we can shut this off. We can open this and that's going to reopen the system. So we once again have a continuous loop. And let's give it a quarter turn back in. All right guys, so that concludes this job. So to change with the zone valve was relatively straightforward. I didn't show this, but it took me quite a while to purge air from the radiators, the uh, the air bleeders, also known as coin vents. I actually had to change them because once I closed them, they were weeping a whole bunch of them. I think they're original to the system, but purging air can take a while. I just didn't bore you guys for 45 minutes to uh, purge air out. Now, the main floor on 
this system has six radiators so you may have to go through all the radiators more than once to get the air out if you still hear like a bubbling or noise that doesn't sound like just flowing water you probably still have air in the system in extreme cases you won't have any heat at all because it's airlock so guys just keep that one thing in mind the time on this job the time was about two hours the majority of that was actually bleeding out the air from each radiator when you bleed out the air you want a nice consistent stream if you hear spurting or it's not a consistent stream that means you still have air in the system the cost of this job the zone valve was about a hundred dollars now the motor had an end switch i just used the internal part of the same zone valve i didn't use the body because i didn't need to but one complete zone valve will address the end switch motor head or the internal assembly guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something i hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that guys till next time please hit the like button subscribe and i'll see you on the next project